every scientific research project started off as just an idea, and your ideas could become real life experiments up in space too. I'm here at Harvard Medical School to talk with Dr. Arun Sharma about his work studying microgravity's effects on the human heart. One thing that's I think a lot of us are still trying to figure out when it comes to human biology in space is how are the different cell types of the body responding to low gravity. My name is Arun Sharma. I am a postdoctoral research fellow at the Harvard Medical School. We're going to be spending more and more time in the future in deep space, in missions to Mars and beyond. And simply put, we just want to understand what happens to the human body after long-term exposure to microgravity or low gravity. The heart is a muscle, so like the other muscles of the body, it does atrophy or lose some of its mass. And it actually changes shape a little bit. This is interesting, and this is actually something that reverts back to normal for the most part when the astronauts return to the planet. But we still don't know exactly what happens to the individual cells of the heart in terms of long-term exposure to microgravity. The cells that I studied are heart cells that are made from stem cells, which are made from skin or blood. So this is actually a pretty exciting new piece of technology that's been developed over the last 10 years or so in the field of stem cell biology. The idea of reprogramming cells from skin or blood into pluripotent stem cells, which means that you can turn them into really whatever cell type you're interested in. And so for me, I'm just inter interested in heart biology. And there's protocols available for turning these stem cells into beating heart cells in the course of about two weeks. And we sent those cells to the International Space Station for a period of about one month, during which time they were maintained by Dr. Kate Rubens, who is uh, an astronaut and also a biologist in her former career. And Kate was absolutely incredible. She maintained these cells on orbit for us for about one month. She conducted weekly nutrient changes on these cells so that they would you know, be uh, beating and they would you know, be functioning long term. Um, and she also examined the way the cells changed their morphology, their shape and size, uh, as well as their beating rates. And finally, she took a small sample of those cells and preserved those cells uh, so that we could do gene expression studies when those samples were turned back to the planet to see at the genetic level what was uh, changing in these cells in response to microgravity. These gene expression studies, in addition to some of the other studies that we're wrapping up, are being followed up by Alexa Wernerowski, who is a fantastic graduate student at Stanford University. So we're looking at RNA sequencing to try to figure out what genes change when we're up in space. And so we're looking at things like metabolism, so how the cell processes its food, like sugars and fats, to get a sense of whether or not the cell's properties are changing when it's in space. And then we could, if we figure out which properties or which gene expression is changing, we can figure out what we should target uh, when we're trying to prevent heart diseases from happening to astronauts in space. Well, my project uh, focused on the heart and the beating cells of the heart. But there's also a lot of interest in the other cell types of the body as well the neurons, the cells that make up the brain, the individual cells of the bone, the individual muscle cells of the other muscles in the body. Uh, we still don't know a lot about how the single cells of the body respond in terms of their exposure to microgravity. We have more of an idea of the whole organs, but I think that's a big unanswered question. And of course, there's a whole bunch of different cell types that we can investigate in that regard. By entering the Genes in Space contest, your experiments, designed to test questions about life in space and microgravity's effects on biology, could become real-life experiments launched to the International Space Station. Go to genesinspace.org to find out more about how to turn your experiments into reality up in space.